13 at the time, in a woods, fishing with my dad. Sitting on the side of the river, fire going, catching catfish like pros. Forest is peaceful, hear a twig snap behind us. Dad and I both spin around, like WTF. Some Native American looking dude, no shirt or shoes, just dirty old looking pants, and a string belt standing there, just staring at us. Figure he's from the local tribe. The reservation is only a mile down the road. Dad chuckles and says, Hello, you gave us a scare. Indian doesn't say anything, just continues to stare at us. Dad asks if he's alright, if he needs help. Indian just sits down next to the fire and keeps looking at us. Dad keeps his hand on his pistol while we continue to fish, watching him out of the corner of his eye. About a half hour passes, and the Indian hasn't moved or made a sound, even though my dad and I keep trying to talk to him. That blank stare. Dad tosses him a fish. Indian finally moves so sudden it made both of us jump. He picks up the fish, says something I didn't understand, looks up at the sky, looks back at us, turns, and walks back into the forest. My dad and I both exchange a WTF look and just go back to fishing. Felt like I was being watched the rest of the night. At dawn, we pack up and start walking back to the truck. See the man standing 30 feet off the trail, watching us. Tell Dad, he says he knows, and to just keep walking. Three more appear out of fucking nowhere, up ahead, still 30 feet off the trail. Feathers and shit, looking like they're straight out of a movie, silently watching us. Start to really freak out. See two more on the other side of the trail. And, for some reason, it made me really calm. Dad doesn't say a word. Just keeps walking. Get to the truck. Load everything up. And look back at the forest. Ten Indians are standing there, at the edge of the forest, watching us leave. Dad and I both start to cry. Overwhelmed with sadness as we're leaving. Get a couple miles down the road and feel normal again. Never return and never speak of it again. I've got myself a story. It's long as fuck and I'm too lazy to control V. So, here we go. Be me, several years back. Be studying business at public college. Hating life? Depressed, no friends at a party school, failing some classes. No job, no guns, except an Ijevsk nugget. Lose last close relative to an 18-wheeler. Decide, I've had about enough. Grab nugget, couple boxes of tulamo, winter clothes, camping supplies, and three days of food. Plan on literally wandering off into the St. Ho National Forest to die. Pick related. Stolen from the internet because, well, I didn't take a camera with me. Didn't want to waste a camera. Mid-December, so it's snowy as fuck. Stop at Walmart. Buy another box of Tula and a few packs of Newports. See poster hung up near the pisser in the Wally World. Cutie Pie recently gone missing. Stare at picture for a while. Think lonely thoughts. Her face has burned into my memory. Piss. Leave Wally World. Still thinking about cutie. And how I'll never have had one of my own. Drive out to Idaho. Arrive at destination. Step out of the car into the cold. Still remember the feeling it gave me. The crunch of the snow underneath my cheap shitty boots. Unpack my shit, ditch the car, leave it unlocked for once. Start walking, light me up a cigarette, lose sight of the car. Hike for hours, 
probably in circles. Couple hours in, veer off the trail, and just hike through the woods. Really drinking in the beauty of it all. Such a haunting and desolate place. Start running low on cigarettes. Start to get the feeling that I shouldn't be here. A twinge of fear. Ignored it. I was out there to die anyhow. Begin to feel like I'm being followed. Hear branches break behind me every so often. Assume that it's just snowfall weighing down on branches until they drop. Hell, that might have been it. But I doubt it. Run out of cigarettes shortly before sundown. Say, Fucking hell. In an audible, almost loud voice. I almost felt guilty for breaking the silence. That sort of feeling you'd get if you said, Fucking cunts. In front of your grandmother. Set up an empty water bottle. Fired some rounds at it from 50 yards with the Mawson. The echoes rang and rang. Maximum tinnitus because I didn't have the forethought to bring ear protection on my own suicide trip. Pull out a single round, tuck it into my boot for shooting myself later if I so choose. Took the backpack off to do the shooting, went to grab it, and noticed movement in the trees, maybe a hundred yards away. It was big, whatever it was. Real big. Always had shitty eyesight, that's why the Navy wouldn't take me. Figured it was just a blurry-ass elk. Was standing there, staring at it, wondering if there was elk in this part of the world or not. Started to get a funny feeling, moving slowly, terribly slowly, went to chamber around in the Mawson. Bolt got stuck for some reason, looked down to see what the problem was, looked up, it was gone. It was just an elk, calm down. Well, the worst it can do is kill me, right? That's why I'm here, right? Right? Start making camp, quickly forget about it. Getting a fire set up and finding wood is difficult as shit. Pain in the dick, get frustrated, have a hissy fit, and throw a piece of wood at a tree. Scream, fuck you, at a tree. Calm down, make camp all the way. Mow down on MRE at about sundown. Why does this shit taste like blood? Because the air smells like blood and copper and decay. The fuck? I've read about this. Relax, Anon, it's nothing. Hear a distorted, Fuck you! come from the trees. Leap to my feet, loaded moss in hand, spinning around and around, scanning the trees. Hear branch break at my nine o'clock, train rifle on my nine o'clock, hold it still. Fine dusting of snow, starts to accumulate on the rifle. After about an hour, relax. Tuck self into sleeping bag. No tent because I fucking forgot one. Idiot. Fold sleeping bag over myself without zipping it. Sleep with rifle on hands, ready to go. Fall asleep with almost entire buddy stuffed into sleeping bag. Awoken by foul smell. Same as before, but more so. Notice my fire is out. Check watch. I'd slept about two hours or so. Feel weight on angles. Look down. My pack is resting on my ankles. I didn't fucking put that there. Realize there's a tree that shouldn't be there. Right at the foot of my sleeping bag. Realize it's not a tree. It moves a little. Swear I can almost hear it breathe. Taller than a person, for sure, and thicker. Was able to make out the arms. It was long, with claws, hanging loose by its sides. Heart starts pounding until that's all I can hear. Consider for a split second, putting the muslin barrel into my mouth and trying to end it all before it gets me. 
Adrenaline takes over. Slept with the Mossin in my hands, ready to go. Use Mossin to flip unzipped sleeping bag off of me. Aim at the figure and fire around. Blinded and deafened. Leap to my feet, swinging the Mossin in front of me like a club and screaming. Regain vision. Panically, scan the trees. It's gone. Maybe it's hiding behind a tree, just out of view. Fuck. I'm scared. I'll kill you. Fuck off. I'll kill you, I will. Said it louder. Fuck off. I'll kill you. Somebody replies. Distant, but clear. Hello? Followed by, Are you okay? Replied, Who the fuck are you? What do you want? The message came back. Jim, now are you alright? Talked with it some more, all the while nervously scanning the perimeter. Couple other voices chimed in from the same direction. Told them I nearly got eaten by a bear. They fired off an orange flare, realized they were close as fuck, just down a hill. Pretty sure I passed through the clearing they set up, and shortly before making camp. Can you come to us? What if I get ambushed? I'll come to you. I have a gun, don't shoot me, okay? Deal. Please hurry. Seemed like it took forever for the homie to show up. We played Marco Polo until he got to me. Had a stainless steel 357 and a flashlight. Introduced himself as Jim. Nice enough guy. Asked me if I was injured. Manlet as fuck. Led me back to his camp. Spoke to me quietly on the way. We've had bear troubles ourselves. Even quieter. Ain't no fucking bear, man. You agree? Replied. Couldn't fucking agree more. The others still think we just ran into a bear in the woods, and are pretty calm. Try not to spook them. Half of them are shit-faced. Roger that. Ask. How many people do you have with you? Six others. We arrive. Their camp was in relative disarray. Coolers and a couple tents scattered around a low fire. Beer cans everywhere. Trash everywhere. Drunk buck-toothed dude stumbles up to me, asks me where the bathroom is. This is a shitty horror movie and we're all gonna fucking die out of ten. Only other gun besides my nugget and Jim's 357 is a fucking 22. Unless you count the flare gun. Jim and the kid with the 22, who introduced himself as Travis, convinced their inebriated friends to stop drinking. In case bears, guys. Manlet bro Jim systematically introduces me to everybody. Buckteeth from earlier has stumbled into a tent and passed out. And has one girl. Shake hands and exchange names with everyone else. Something is off. Run some numbers in my head. Seven people total. Two asleep in tents. So, why are there six people out here? Jim digs off to work on the fire. Go to say hello to the last person, a girl. Ignores and stares at me. It's kind of dark, but I swear the face looks familiar. Something moves in my left peripheral vision. It's stainless steel. It's the barrel of Jim's revolver. He's pointing it at the person I'm trying to talk to, slowly moving closer. Her face is just expressionless. Get the feeling that I know her, and then instantly realize that I do. It's the face from the missing person poster at Walmart. Homie starts to say something to the effect of, Who the fuck are you? She, or it, wheels around and dead sprints into the tree line, gone in an instant. People who saw it start yelling, who was that? What the fuck? Smell hits. Check the Mawson. It's loaded. We form a perimeter. Armed expeditions go to the tree line. Panically gather wood. Build fire big as fuck. 
Everyone who isn't passed out drunk is clutching something. The 22, the flare gun, machetes, a hatchet, regular knives. Nobody says a fucking word. Here branches breaking off in one direction. More breaking, same direction. Smell gets fouler. Fuck, 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 fuck. Wish I had my cigarettes. Girl with the flare gun sees something. Fires a flare into the trees. Curse at the girl's stupidity under my breath. See silhouette 15 or so feet from the flare. Illuminated. Fire around at it. Hit a tree. Thing bolts. People see it bolt. Hear it bolt. It doesn't run away from the campsite. Just kind of adjacent to it. Branches break and people see things move for another hour. Kid with a 22 starts firing rounds almost constantly at different stuff. Is scolded for wasting ammo, but he continues. Jim grabs and shakes him, tells him to knock it off. Realize they look so much alike because they're brothers. As the melodrama unfolds, hear loud shit behind me. We all round, fire shot at the blur moving towards camp at lightning pace. Got a blurry, firelight look at the thing as it sprinted right through camp, grabbed a dude, and tried to haul him off into the woods. Guy had a machete, hacked at it, and it let him go. Was curled in a ball, screaming. Dragged him back to the fire, calmed him down. The thing was big. It ran with a funny-ass gait, but it was fast. Furry thing, big, oversized feet, and antlers. I swear, it had fucking antlers. Fuck, Jimmy, you okay? You see those fucking claws, man? It circles more. All of us, myself included, panic shoot into the trees, all running low on ammo, and it's still only 3 a.m. Fire burning low. It starts talking to us, parroting back things that we've said. Fuck, Jimmy, you okay? Running out of 357, guys, fuck. I almost hit it that time. Couple people start crying. Start to fucking lose it myself. The thing fucking charges again, right at me. Scream and sprint right at it. Bury a bayonet in its chest and pull the fucking trigger. Swipes at me with a claw, goes just over my head. Reels, pulls back, and darts back into the tree line. I fucking chased it. Gun raised over my head, screaming. Got into the trees and saw it crouching there, six feet from me. It was dark, but I saw it. I looked into its eyes, and I fucking lost it. Lost every bit of courage that I had. I just stood there, stiff, waiting for it to fucking kill me. That face went hopeless prey in front of an apex predator. Couple people grabbed me by the shoulders and dragged me back to the fire. They didn't see it. It was right there. Only three rounds left now. Use snow to clean black steaming blood off of bayonet. Camp was still circled, but less so, and the thing didn't fucking parrot us anymore. Just wheezed. Loud, terrible, awful wheezes. And it shrieked some too. Sun finally started to come up. It was the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. I fucking swear. They haphazardly packed their shit. We hiked ten or so tense minutes, in tight formation, to a trail very close by. I had no idea it was there. Follow the trail back to the Pathfinder. They all jump in. I'm stuck standing there. Remember my mission. Why it was that I came there. Look down at the rifle. Three rounds left. Remember the bullet in my boot. Four rounds left. The fuck are you doing standing there, Anon? Get in the fucking car. Anon, get the fuck in. Sorry, guys. 
I have unfinished business. Start to walk back down the trail, back into the woods. Feel the crunch of snow beneath my boots. The rays of sunlight shining down. Suddenly, darkness. Got knocked the fuck out and thrown into the Pathfinder. They hauled ass out, swear they saw something big step out from behind a tree, and watch them drive away. We all agreed never to talk about it again, for some fucking reason. Never went back for my car. It was a piece of shit anyways. I was taken into foster care when I was very young. I never knew my birth parents. Didn't find out I was adopted until my teens. Had good childhood. My adoptive parents were loving, kind, and gave me a good upbringing. Every now and then, I have a recurring nightmare. Same thing every time. It's the middle of the day, and I'm out in the woods lying on my back. I'm surrounded by people. Their faces are covered so I can't see them clearly. One of them grabs my head and forces me to look straight into the sun. Just as my eyes start burning, the sun begins to fade. I'm in pitch blackness, but the spot where the circle used to be is still distinguishable. It's an unnaturally dark circle, kinda hard to describe with words, just an impossibly dark circle. And that's when I always wake up, usually covered in sweat and panting. I figured something bad happened to me as a child. Whenever I ask about my birth parents and my past, my folks get really uncomfortable, saying that they don't know who they were or how I could find them. Recently went on a massive road trip with a few mates. Stop in some dead-end town one night. We're drinking at the campsite when some drunk homeless guy comes wandering in. The guy is off his face. Pretty funny to watch him stumble around and spout random shit. Tell him we'll give him a beer if he can do 20 push-ups. He manages somehow, and I go to give him a beer. He gets a good look at my face as I hand it to him, and he goes white as a fucking ghost. Drops the beer and jumps back. Guy looks terrified. Points at me and yells, This one's seen the black sun and then runs off. I have never told anyone about the dream, so this scared the shit out of me. So, now I feel that I should maybe hire a personal investigator or something to look into my parents and childhood. Kinda scared about what I might possibly find out, though. Repost from different thread. 2010. Be me. 20 years old, and very dumb, and living in a big city for the first time. Wanted to get drunk, didn't have friends yet. I still kinda don't. Heard some rumors at college about this one shitty bar that didn't ID. Go there. Huge dickhead bouncer with a face tattoo, no hair, and like three neck rolls. ID? Fuh. I showed him. And he told me to get the fuck out. Not old enough. Fuck, man, I got all dressed up for nothing. Walked back across the street to the bus stop. Smoked a cig and waited. Hey. Hey. Are you talking to me? They were. Two ladies. One blonde pixie cut. Huge tits. Red dress. One black girl. Long dark hair. Pink dress. Both super hot. We saw you get turned away at the door. They're really giggly. In retrospect, I would have remembered two sexy women in line, ahead of me for sure. I didn't remember seeing them, but hey, who cares? It's two sexy girls. They tell me it's stupid as shit in there anyway, that they'll get me booze and show me around the city, since I told them I'd just moved there. We go to a liquor store, hop on the train. I get plastered as we hop on and off trains to see various shit around the city. They stop at liquor stores as I finish off pint after pint, paid for everything. 
At one stop, a giant white guy with weird curly hair got off the same stop right after us. Got drunker. Got on the next train heading off to a different direction. Noticed same weird curly hair sitting a few seats behind us. Tried to point it out to the girls, but they tee-heed it away. It was a really good time, to be honest. They showed me monuments and classic buildings and stuff that I'd only seen in pictures before then. But I was also super drunk and disoriented from all the train hopping. Wasn't sure where we were anymore. We get off the train. The blonde girl says, This is our last stop. And they both giggle. I looked around. I'm not in the city anymore. I'm in a suburb now. Look at the train map at the stop and realize how far away I really am from home. Big guy with shorter length black hair gets off behind us and walked ahead straight down the street. Come on, come back to our place with us. And they started walking down that same exact street. They're being pushy and weird. Start to sober up because of the red flags. I don't even know their names, actually. Just got me so shitty drunk, and I don't know where I am now. I'm gonna get a ride home, actually. But when I reached for it, my phone and wallet were both gone. You probably left them on a train and on. You're so drunk. Come back and rest at our place. Nope. No, no. The way they were practically forcing me down the street was really fucking weird. The next train pulled up. I bolted and hopped in the doors just in time. They kicked me out at the next stop because of no money. Start walking the 15 plus miles back. A car passed me twice, real slow. Get a good look at the driver. See his face. It's the same fucking huge dude that I felt like was following me. He had a face tattoo. It was the fucking bouncer. So, yeah, I still to this day don't know what they were really planning. Those girls definitely got me shitty drunk and stole my shit. Why they were leading me to a discreet location with that guy, I don't know. Organ trafficking? Or worse, human trafficking. I've never posted this story or really told anyone. But, here it goes. Be me, 18 years old. Just got my first car, 1989 Toyota Celica. Usually a night person, so I only drive at night. I live in a relatively small town, 40,000 people. 3 a.m., driving on Main Street. Driving past middle school, high school in sight. Look over to high school and look at the sky above it. Weird, eerie light that I've never seen before. All of a sudden, a green orb literally falls down from the sky, almost like it was shot out from space. Press on the gas and speed over there thinking it was a meteorite. Those are worth money. It looked like it fell in a really rural part of town, Cherry Valley. Drive over there, pass ex-girlfriend's house, and notice her front porch light is off. Literally always on because coyotes hate light or something. About that time, I notice every light is off in Cherry Valley. Think to myself, it's like an EMP went off. Right as I think that, my car turns off. Decide to get out and walk less than a quarter mile from where I saw the orb. Decide to get out and walk less than a quarter mile from where I saw the orb looking thing fall. Walk over this hill, and to find the orb sitting in a field, spinning really fast, kicking out dirt like a helicopter would. Decide to throw a rock, and it's instantly ricocheted right back at me. Missed it by that much. For whatever reason, I think to myself, I wonder if it's hot. Start walking towards it, and feel an intense heat. All of a sudden, it lets out a really loud screech and launches back into space, never to be seen again. 
I noped the fuck out of there, back to my car. The car turned on with no problem, and the lights were all back on, everywhere. I went back there the next day when it was light out. There was literally no sign that anything had touched this field of dried up grass. Okay, time to finally dump the time that I came literally three inches face to face with a demon. In green text. Be me. Be around 17. Live in West Virginia. Walking my dog, Bosco. He's a beagle slash German shepherd mix in the evening. Nobody around, which is strange because there are usually a few people around. Even at this time of night. Bosco stops abruptly, looking kind of panicked, sniffing the air. What's wrong, boy? Look where he's looking. About six meters away from us, under a glitchy street lamp, is what appears to be a black dog with absurdly pointed ears, facing the opposite direction of us. Poor guy's probably lost, I thought to myself. Bosco is still completely motionless, shivering slightly, tail raised way up. Whistle at the black dog to see if I could get the poor fella over here. My face when its neck did a full 180 degree turn to look at us like a fucking owl. It had a human face. A human face. Bosco takes a step forward, hunches his shoulders, lowers his head, and growls like a feral beast, the fur on the back of his neck bristling. My face when I'm completely frozen in fear. The thing stands up and turns its body towards us without moving its head. My face when massive fucking lumps are moving under its skin while it looks me directly in the eyes. My fucking face when a seven foot thing with basically no muscle mass splits through the dog's back like a cicada. I look away for a split second and try to scream for help. Apparently so fucking scared, I couldn't even manage that. In the split second I looked away, the anorexic looking humanoid that burst through the dog's back was now literally three inches away from my face. I don't know how I got there so quickly, but it had even escaped Bosco who was staring at it the entire time. I literally pissed myself in fear. This thing's eyes were pushed way back in its skull, and its jaw looked like it could expand to at least three times the size that it already was. It stared me down for a few seconds, before it let out an ear-splitting human-slash-pig scream. Bosco had bitten down on his leg, and apparently crushed its shin with his teeth. It fell onto its back and squirmed around like a maggot trying to get Bosco off of its leg. My face when it just fucking rips off its own leg and gallops away on all fours, or threes in this case, into the surrounding woodland. Apparently three different people called the police because they thought violent crimes were going on. And that, ladies and gents is the story of how I came face to face with a demon and how my dog saved me. What did you do with the leg? Please say you took it to a taxidermist and got it mounted as a fucking trophy for your bro dog. I think Bosco ate it. I was standing there dumbfounded for like five minutes after all of this happened and all I could hear was crunching and when I looked down at him, his lips and chest fur were caked with blood and bone fragments. God damn it, Bosco. Still a fucking bro.